Hello and welcome to the sixth and final episode in our series on information theory. Today we will talk about the fundamental theorem for a noisy channel, also known as the noisy channel coding theorem that was first described by Claude Shannon. And we will introduce a concept of a channel capacity in presence of noise, as well as provide a rate at which you can send symbols through the noisy channel and describe how to do so reliably. Given our blueprint for a communication system and using the binary symmetric channel as our means of communication, we need a way to calculate the rate at which we are able to send information through that channel. I believe that you already have the tools and the intuition necessary to get to the correct answer. But Shannon claims that the first impulse might be to just take the amount of bits that we sent that didn't get flipped. For example, if we sent with a 90% flip probability, that would be 0.9 bits. This might seem correct at first, and the idea is right, but the formulation is not. Let's see what happens as we increase the probability of a bit flip to 0.5. By our current definition, we are still sending bits with a rate of 0.5. But there is actually no information being transmitted since what the destination gets is just random outcomes. Likewise, if we set the probability of a flip to 100%, this formula gives us a rate of 0 bits. While we can just flip the bit again on the receiving side to get the correct answer with no information loss. Evidently, the proper correction to apply to the amount of transmitted information is the amount of missing information in the received signal. Or in other terms, the uncertainty about what was actually sent in the received signal. Could you formulate that in terms of entropy? The answer is the following. Our rate is equal to the entropy of the input, reduced by the entropy of the input given the output. Or in other words, it's how much information there was in the original signal, reduced by how uncertain we are of what got sent when we received the signal. As some of you might remember, this is exactly what was formulated as mutual information between the input and the output. And we can check if our previous examples made sense. For equal flip probability, where we send random data, the rate is indeed zero. And for an inverted case, the rate is equal to the expected information in the input. The capacity for the noisy channel should be the maximum possible rate of transmission. And since we can only manipulate the entropy of our source, it will be when the expected information of the sent message is maximal. So when we maximize our input's entropy. The notion of a capacity of a noisy channel may seem uncomfortable at first. Why would we define such a metric, since the output is never fully certain? However, it should be clear that we can reduce the uncertainty of the message by adding redundancy to it. For example, Imagine that we send the same message a thousand times. Statistically, we would be able to recover the original message with a very low probability of error. But our rate of transmission would drop by a factor of a thousand. Here is where the beauty of the noisy channel theorem comes at play. It shows what are the attainable uncertainties of the input given the output when we send data through a source with a certain entropy and it revolutionized the modern world by showing that if we transmit data with rates up to our channel's capacity, the error rate can be made arbitrarily small. But before we get into the intuition behind the noisy channel, let's see how we can send messages reliably, because obviously repetition is not going to take us very far. I already mentioned this before, but we are going to use encoding and decoding to do this. Let's start by looking at an example where we don't perform any encoding. Imagine that our source sends digits from 0 to 3. Since there is no encoding, our transmitter just blindly copies the message and sends it over our channel. There, it is disrupted by noise that randomly increments the number in our message. And again, there is no decoding so we can completely skip the receiver. Currently, 
there is no way to unambiguously map the message that was received at the destination to the message that was sent. But there are outputs that are non-confusable. Let's say we just sent 0 and 2. Now, there is no ambiguity about the message on the receiving side. So for this case, we can just use encoding and map all of our messages so that they are a multiple of 2. And now, even if our noise increments the message, it is still not overlapping with any other message in our subset of messages. All that is now left is to use the decoder to map our encoded messages back to their original form. And voila! We achieved reliable transmission in presence of noise. But that is not exactly fair, since real-world data and noise do not really look like this. And it's usually in some sort of binary form. And the noise just changes each bit with some probability. The important thing to note is that if we are not flipping our bits at random, there will be some outcomes of noise that are more probable than others. This is denoted by different colors here. And the same goes for the receiving part. To combat noise, we can just assume that some of those patterns of perturbation by noise are so improbable that they will never happen. Right now, we can use this encoding to send a second message through our channel, since their subset of probable outcomes of noise does not overlap. With that in mind, it is now time to get an intuition behind the noisy channel theorem. Again, we will be using our binary symmetric channel as an example. So far, we were only using encoding and decoding with a single message. But it is much more efficient when we use something called an extended channel. The idea of an extended channel is that we use our channel to send multiple messages and encode and then decode a block made out of them. Here, the number of symbols that form that block is denoted by capital T. To give an intuitive understanding of the noisy channel theorem, we are going to work with large blocks, so just imagine for now that we encode an infinitely long sequence of messages. In these scenarios, there will be 2 to the power of t possible messages that we can send, and each message can be obfuscated by noise into every other output message, with varying probabilities. Our rate is essentially the amount of bits that we can send reliably through our channel each cycle. To calculate it, we need to take the amount of messages that we can send and divide them by the amount of messages that can be uniquely encoded. With our current assumptions, the amount of output messages and the amount of unique messages will be the same as the amount of input messages. If we do the math, this essentially boils down to just the rate of 1. And it is true, if we want a completely error-free communication, we can only send one message, no matter how long our block is. And as you might have already guessed, we are going to do the same trick as before. We pick a very small error rate that we are satisfied with, and we prune out the connections between the messages that have such low probability that they will almost certainly never happen. Then, we just use the input messages that map to unique output messages. But to be fair, we also need to consider that there will be some inputs and outputs that will also be improbable. So that leaves us with 2 to the power of entropy of our input times the amount of messages that we send of probable input messages, and similarly for the output. And the amount of reasonable effects for each message that we send is equal to the amount of information that our input gives us about the output, again, multiplied by the amount of messages that we send. And this essentially simplifies to our rate being equal to mutual information between the input and the output. This is exactly the outcome that Shannon came to in his work. The interesting part about the noisy channel theorem is that it does not tell you how to find the codes. It just proves that they exist. And up to this day, there is still a huge amount of work being put into finding the best codes for some types of channels. This is where I leave you. 
The series has been a long and great journey for me. I learned a lot through making this, and I hope that you learned as much by watching it. Goodbye.